past shortstop Hubie Brooks. The Expos' one to nothing lead was soon erased after that missed double play. Pinch runner Tony Walker scored on a ground out to tie the game before Astros center fielder Ty Ganey singled for his first game-winning RBI. Denny Walling's two-run home run made it 4-1 Houston. On the plus side for the Expos, Tim Raines continues to be among the National League leaders in several offensive categories, including a 336 batting average, third best behind Chris Brown and Tony Gwynn. Gold Glove third baseman Tim Wallach is headed for a banner season. If Wallach doubles his 14 homers and 49 RBIs over the second half of the year, he'll have his best season ever. And pitcher Floyd Yeomans. He's bounced back after a shaky start. The fireballing right-hander had a dismal 7.25 ERA after his first four starts through early May. Yeomans will be bidding for win number nine tonight at Olympic Stadium, where Hal Lanier's first-place Astros try for a three-game sweep of Buck Rogers' second-place Expos. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dave Van Horn, along with Duke Snyder. Well, for the Expos, they just finished a two-week road trip. And they did it in spectacular fashion, taking three out of four from the Atlanta Braves over this past weekend, scoring 35 runs in Atlanta. But then the team went flat. They got blown out of a game here Monday night. Jay Tibbs pitched well last night, but the Expos couldn't hold on. The Astros won it. However, they've gotten a break. The Cincinnati Reds have been beating the New York Mets. A change on the ball club in the bullpen, Randy St. Clair, right-hander who features a fork ball. Left-handed starter Joe Hesketh is on the disabled list. He's got an upper back and a shoulder problem, and there'll be more news on that in the next couple of days. Buck Rogers has made some lineup changes for tonight's game. Floyd Yeomans against left-hander Bob Nepper. Duke Snyder is going to visit with the Expos manager. Let's go down to the field. Well, Buck, half a season has gone by after tonight's game, and I know there are a lot of pluses and minuses for you, but I think the pluses take over. Well, I think so. I think that uh, Floyd Yeoman has been a tremendous plus for uh, for this ball club and his pitching staff. I think that uh, Mike Fitzgerald, back to the plate, has been a tremendous plus. Uh, he's come back from a knee operation and it's just been super, almost uh, all-star credentials back to the plate. Hubie Brooks and Tim Wallach have just put together a tremendous first half. Even though uh, Hubie has had the bad thumb uh, the last uh, month almost and not swinging the bat as well as he could, he still put good numbers on the board. Guys, just what would Hubie Brooks have if he hadn't hurt his finger and then his thumb? Because uh, he'd have at least 65 RBIs. Well, the way he was swinging, swinging the bat uh, earlier in the season, boy, uh, I don't know. He might have 20 home runs by now, but uh, he's been he's fighting it and he's battling and he's that type of player. A couple of guys we could mention, Tim Raines, got a chance to lead the league in hitting. Well, Tim, he's having a, uh, a, a another Tim Raines type year. He's getting the recognition that he deserves. He's stealing bases. He's uh, getting big hits. And even in the third spot, when we put him down in number three, he got big RBI hits for us. So uh, he's having an another tremendous year. Well, he doesn't hit all that many home runs. He could, but he knows his role, and he plays it well. That's right. He, uh, he, he goes for the base on balls when he's leading off, and he swings a little more at the first pitch when he's, uh, he's in there to drive, uh, drive runs in. You've manipulated quite quite a bit with some of your outfielders, Webster and Wright, two in particular. You've also put Newman at second base at times, and and Grinchicki at first, and they've all worked out well. Well, Vance Law has had a he struggled through this first half, and we're hoping to get a good offensive second half from Vance. We're playing him uh, tonight, next few games, and see if we can get him started. Newman's been a, a, a pleasant surprise as a replacement. Uh, Galarraga, we're just about on the money where we expect him to be around 250 with seven or eight home runs. Uh, but we're trying to uh, play him a little more against left-handers, a little less against right-handers as we go through. And Krinczewski has done a good job. We've all been waiting for a Met losing streak. They've lost three in a row to the Cincinnati Reds. And uh, by golly, a big win tonight would really help. Well, we got to make a little bit of hay now. They're starting to lose. Maybe we can close the gap. Okay, Buck, good luck. Thank you. Expo Baseball on CBC returns after this. The home plate meeting taking place, and Dana DeMuth on the left of your screen has the plate tonight to call the balls and strikes. Terry Tate is at first base. Jerry Crawford at second base. Charlie Williams at third base. This is Harry Wendelstadt's crew. Harry is on vacation. And DeMuth has joined the crew to fill in.
the Expos take the field. Floyd Yeomans on the mound tonight. Let's check out the Houston Astros lineup for this ball game. It is the same lineup that went up against Jay Tibbs last night. Bill Doran leading off and playing second. Ty Ganey in center field hitting second. Denny Walling, the third baseman, bats third. Glenn Davis having a terrific year hitting cleanup, the first baseman. Right fielder Kevin Bass hits fifth. Jose Cruz, the left fielder, sixth. Craig Reynolds batting seventh. He's the shortstop. John Mizrock doing the catching. And Bob Nepper on the mound pitching and hitting in the ninth spot. And here's Floyd Yeomans. Uh, Floyd Yeomans, as we've mentioned, doing an outstanding job now. He's eight and five. His ERA coming down at 4.42. Throws a fastball, slider, and a changeup. Those are his three pitches. They have still taken the curveball away from him. They don't want him to throw it because he's gotten such good rhythm with his other three pitches. Control still a bit of a problem. He's walked 64 in 97 and two-thirds innings. He's only given up 77 hits and struck out 80. Yeomans trying to win his ninth game of the year for the Expos tonight. And they need the win, as we mentioned earlier, the Mets lost their third straight to the Cincinnati Reds. So far this season, the Expos are three and five against the Houston Astros. The Astros have won the last four games, going back to May 31st at Houston, when they took a series two out of three, winning games two and three. Then they came in here and won on Monday night and again last night. So the Astros have a four game winning streak against the Expos. So Floyd Yeomans has his work cut out for him tonight. And I would think if Floyd is on his game, so do the Astros. Very quickly this afternoon, San Francisco lost. So Houston by themselves in first place in the National League West, a half game ahead of the Giants, who lost to the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs beat San Francisco 4-3. And by the way, in this afternoon's game at Candlestick Park, the Chicago Cubs made a triple play in the fifth inning. So a baseball rarity, the triple play. Prior to the ball game, Expos third baseman Tim Wallach and center and right fielder Andre Dawson received their Gold Glove Awards from the Rawlings Sporting Goods Company. We're set to go. Bill Doran, the 28-year-old second baseman, one of the reasons why the Astros have done so well is that Doran, their second baseman, is really progressing now as a big league ball player in his fourth year in the National League. Checks in tonight at 269. Well, this young man can do just about everything. He's a great double play man, good defensive second baseman. He has some speed. He's stolen 28 times. A good leadoff man. Yeomans hitting that outside corner. One ball and one strike to Bill Doran. 22-year-old Floyd Yeomans stands six foot, 190. Two strikes on Doran. That looked like the changeup, and it really fooled Doran. We'll watch it here. It's been a good pitch for Floyd. Low and in, two balls, two strikes. Anytime you can throw over 90 miles an hour and then have a changeup like that, why, you're going to fool hitters. Yeomans two and two. And that's all for Doran. Struck him out. Floyd Yeomans now has 81 strikeouts in 98 innings. You see the fastball away, Floyd pitching from the first base side of the mound and makes that ball run away a little bit. And Doran didn't have a chance. One gone and Ty Ganey up. 25-year-old outfielder playing in his ninth game since being called up from their AAA club. He's done a good job with the bat, hitting at 391. Nine hits and 23 at-bats as he looks at a strike. Got some news today. The Padres have announced two trades. San Diego sent right-handed pitcher Tim Stoddard to the New York Yankees for Ed Whitson. So George Steinbrenner got his wish, I guess. He was able to make a trade involving Whitson. I think it's a good deal for the Padres because we have seen Stoddard, and he really wasn't burning the National League up, and Whitson getting back into the National League might be a break for him. 
Here's the two-strike pitch to Ganey, and that was no contest. Strikeout number two for Floyd Yeomans. I will watch this one. That pitch really breaking down. Off-speed pitch, way out in front, Ty Ganey. He tried to hold up his swing, sizing it up as a ball, but couldn't. A couple of young hitters, Doran and especially Ganey. Now we'll see how the veteran left-handed batter, Denny Walling, fares against Floyd Yeomans. Two outs, none on in the first inning. Walling with some pretty good numbers. Hit a two-run home run here last night in the eighth inning to put icing on the cake for the Astros. One strike on Walling. I think Walling proved that he was a pretty good fastball hitter. He hit one off Jeff Reardon, and Reardon said he was throwing hard last night, and Walling parked it right over the right field fence. Ball one, one and one. The other part of that San Diego trade, by the way, they've traded left-handed pitcher Mark Thurman to the Detroit Tigers for Dave LaPointe. So LaPointe comes back to the National League. That's out of play. One ball and two strikes on Walling. Well, the Padres in position to make a move. They're right in the middle of the pack and adding some pitching strength to the ball club. I still think the point can pitch. He took some weight off. There's no reason why he shouldn't. He's the left-hander. Besides, why shouldn't be able to win some games in the National League? Floyd didn't miss by much. Two and two the count. Balls and two strikes. The count on Walling. Walling, who platoons at third base along with Phil Garner, and Hal Lanier also platoons at shortstop using both Craig Reynolds, the left handed batter, and Dickie Thon, the right handed batter. That's all for Denny Walling. Floyd Yeomans has struck out the side to open the ball game. The Astros go one, two, three, and after a half inning of play, no score here. The game coming to you from Olympic Stadium in Montreal. You're watching Expos Baseball on CBC. This program is authorized under television rights granted by the Montreal Baseball Club Limited solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Montreal Baseball Club Limited is prohibited. You're looking at Bob Nepper. We'll take a look at the Expos lineup for tonight's game. Tim Raines leading off and playing in left. Vance Law at the second baseman hitting number two. Andre Dawson in right field. Batting third. The cleanup hitter is shortstop Hubie Brooks. Tim Wallach batting fifth and playing at third. Mitch Webster hitting behind Wallach in the sixth spot, playing in center. Andres Galarraga moves to the number seven position. He's the first baseman. Mike Fitzgerald catching the ball game, hitting eighth. And Floyd Yeomans, the pitcher, bats ninth. So the key changes are Law into the number two spot in the order. And Buck moving Webster behind Wallach, hoping that this will help Wallach get some more good pitches and dropping Galarraga down in the order where he has slumped of late and Buck feeling that maybe this will take a little bit of the pressure off Galarraga by hitting him seventh. We'll see how this new look lineup fares for Rogers and the Expos against Bob Nepper. Well, Bob and six this year. He's been having a little bit of a problem here lately, but he's a quality type pitcher, not overpowering as Yeoman has been tonight or Nolan Ryan last night, but uh, Mike's got the night before, but He's the type of guy that mixes the ball up, changes speeds, curve ball, he'll turn the change up over, make sort of a screw ball out of it, and sneak the sinking, moving type fastball in there once in a while. So he relies on control and getting the hitters off stride. Nepper, of course, has struck out 78 and walked just 32 in 141 and two-thirds innings. Tim Raines will lead it off. Tim has a 14-game batting streak. Earlier this season, he had a 17-game batting streak, the longest of his career. Number three in the league, hitting at 336. Nepper goes to work with his first pitch of the night. 
Ball one to Reigns as we see Bob Nepper, born in Akron, Ohio, grew up in Oregon, makes his home there now. Drafted by the Giants. A play for Reynolds, and Reigns is out by an eyelash. A nice, easy delivery by Nepper. Nothing deceptive about him, except that he does change speeds, as I mentioned. And you see a lot of ground balls when he is on. When, he, when he's got his stuff, why the infielders really have to be alert. Vance Law batting at 210. And that's what Buck Rogers means uh, or alludes to when he says we've got to get Vance Law going. Buck is still sold on this club being a better second half team than it's been in the first half. But of course, one of the keys is to get the bat of Vance Law in high gear. This is Reynolds again, and Law is out. Two outs, Craig Let Reynolds, a veteran shortstop, but still with some pretty good range. Now that ball looked like it had center field written all over it, but Reynolds gets that big glove out just in time to make the play and turns it into a routine out. Vance trying to pull that ball, but hit it hard enough for some shortstops, but not for Reynolds. Greg Reynolds with the fielding play, two outs. Andre Dawson moving in, Hawk hitting at 273. Earlier this year, he hit two home runs in one game against Bob Nepper. Ball one to Dawson, who now has 13 home runs and 29 RBIs. He's been off the disabled list just over a week now. One and one on Dawson. When we first saw Bob Nepper, he pitched for the San Francisco Giants. Well, Andre trying to pull that pitch, and he was out front. That's changing speeds, as we mentioned. Two balls and a strike. Nepper falling behind. Nepper is signed by the Giants in June of 1972. First pitched in the big leagues in 1976 with San Francisco. Was traded by the Giants in 1980 to Houston. And Andre trying to get his timing back. When he came back off the disabled list, he was hitting 298. He's dropped 25 points trying to get that timing back. He's shown signs of coming out of it, but he faced a couple of tough pitchers in the last couple of nights, and nobody hit him very well. Two balls, two strikes. Now a full count to Andre Dawson. John Misrock behind the plate for the Astros. Alan Ashby also does some catching, but of late, Mizrock has carried the load. They had another young catcher, Mark Bailey, who got sent out just a short while ago. Bailey was slumping with the bat and behind the plate, so they sent him to Tucson, and Mizrock's got another chance to play a lot with the Astros. Dawson hits one a ton to left field. No doubt about it. It's up, up, and away, and a home run for Andre Dawson. Number 14 for the Hawks. Well, the left fielder Cruz did not move on the ball as soon as it was hit. Why it was over his head just moments later, and he just stood there and watched to see how far it was going to go. The home run ball from Andre Dawson putting the Expos on the scoreboard one to nothing here in the first. Watch the Hawk get that top hand and throw the big end of the bat right into the ball. There it is. Wow. Pitch away a little bit so he is able to extend, get that bat out there and get those arms working. See, Cruz didn't move. <laughs> Hubie Brooks takes ball one. It was on the 1st of June when Andre Dawson hit two home runs. Oh, Bob Nepper in the same game down at the Astrodome. Now he connects here at Olympic Stadium. Two balls, no strikes to Hubie, who has the fourth best batting average in the league at 327. Brooks lacing that ball to the right field alley, and over to cut it is Bass, and that'll hold Brooks. Good play by Bass. And Hubie hitting Nepper the way you have to hit him, the pitch out away, he went with it to right center. 
Gibby had second in mind all the way until he saw Bass come up with the ball and making a good throw. We'll see it here. Pitch out of way, a little sinking type fastball. What's the good play that Bass makes? And then he throws a strike to second base. Tim Wallach takes a strike. Wallach hitting a 280. So Dawson, Brooks, and Wallach now are all tied for the club home run lead. They've all hit 14. Hubie leads in RBIs with 50. Wallach's next with 49. One ball and one strike. Dawson missed about three weeks of the season for the torn hamstring. One pitch to Wallach low. Glenn Davis holding Brooks at first base. Wallach hits a shot and Bass is there. Wallach slammed his batting helmet down and he'll need a new one for his next turn at bat. <laughs> Wallach out on a hard liner to right center. One run on the Dawson home run. Brooks is left after one. The Expos lead one to nothing. <laughs> Expos first baseman Andres Galarraga. Mentioned that Buck Rogers moved him down in the order to try to help him there. One thing that really hasn't suffered at all has been his play around the bag at first. He's been an outstanding fielder at first base. Glenn Davis, Kevin Bass, and Jose Cruz up here for the Astros. Floyd Yeoman struck out the side in the first inning. His strikeout high in one game this year is 11. One strike on Davis. Davis batting at 270, number one in the National League in home runs with 19. He is fourth in RBIs with 55. This is just his second year in the league. Two strikes on Davis. Floyd's liable to get a season high tonight before the sixth inning, the way he's throwing. Wow. Boy, I'll tell you, he is getting it up to home plate. On June 13th, he struck out 11 Phillies. Look out, Astros, if he keeps this up. A ball and two strikes to Davis. Davis hits a hard line drive. Reigns is in. One away. Reigns motioning his first move was to go back that hard streaming line drive right at him but then he came in quickly and made the play. Kevin Bass hitting at 310. Liner right to Brooks. Well Davis and Bass made contact. Two outs in the second. Now one of these games or one of these years, we're going to see Floyd Yeomans fire up a no hitter. This young man has outstanding stuff. I think so, and I, I had mentioned, I believe, on one of our telecasts that I think he is also going to have one of those big strikeout nights. Really big up there with the big boys like Carlton and Seaver and Clemens. Play by Galarraga was outstanding. The throw pulled him off. The big guy stretched down right on his belly, but kept his foot on the base to get Cruz. Nothing across here for the Astros because of this play. Well, Yubi, Yubi thinks he has to hurry. He doesn't. And, and after an Watch Andres. Catches the ball in falls. After an inning and a half, one to nothing Expos. At 
the start of the season, I predicted Tim Raines would lead the league in hitting. Well, you're right there, Tim. Yeah, well, yes, I am. I have uh, fell into a groove right now. I'm starting to swing the bat real well on both sides. And if I could do that, I think uh, the number one reason for me swing this way is I am is uh, swing the bat well right-handed. And uh, last year, I got off to a slow start right-handed, which happened for me. But uh, as the season went on, I got better. But uh, right now, I'm swinging the bat well right-handed. It's helping me uh, swing the bat just as well, I think. So many base hits in the first inning, and I hit third in the batting order when I played, and I found the first at bat sometimes the toughest one, but it doesn't seem that way for you. Well, not really. I guess uh, leading off, you know, the pitchers don't want to walk me, and uh, usually I pretty much get pretty good pitches to, to swing the bat. And right now I feel real uh, comfortable at the plate, and I'm getting the good pitches, and I'm getting the good swings on the, on the balls and uh, hitting it hard. And I think... You know, that's all I really want to do is go up to the plate and hit the ball hard and hope that uh, I can hit it where nobody is. Is 100 stolen bases out of sight? I don't think so. Right now, I feel that as long as I can swing. Well, Mitch Webster is out for three. One gone in the bottom of the second. That'll bring Andre Scalaraga to the plate. Mitch trying to go to right field with a pitch inside and it's a little slicing liner towards Doran, but he kept the ball in front of him and made a good play. First baseman cheated a little bit, but he was on the bag just long enough. Galarraga now 249, eight home runs, 26 RBIs. Doran throws him out at first base. Two away. The Expos up one to nothing on Andre Dawson's first inning home run. And the batter will be Mike Fitzgerald, the Expos catcher. We had to cut the Reigns interview just a bit short on that uh, 100 stolen base season. Why, he said that he thought he could do it, and uh, usually he steals a lot more in the second half than he does the first half. So Tim thinks he can do it. I'm pretty sure it'll be done. Mike Fitzgerald with a 294 batting average. He's got a career high 35 RBIs. In his last 84 at bats, Fitz is hitting 369. He's already established a career high with a half a dozen home runs. Ball and a strike to Mike Fitzgerald. up in the air for the first baseman Glenn Davis he's called for it Nepper has a three up three down inning nothing across in the second for the Expos so after two at Olympic Stadium in Montreal the Expos lead Houston one to nothing Stadium today. The Cincinnati Reds made it a clean sweep over the New York Mets. Beat them 11 to 1. Tom Browning won his seventh game to beat Dwight Gooden. And guess who hit a home run off Dwight Gooden? Sal Butera. Ha. Former Expo catcher. Cubs over the Giants 4-3. And turning to the American League, these finals in from today's games. Cleveland beat Chicago 6-3. Bill Negro, the winner, is 306th career victory. Detroit beat Minnesota 7 to nothing on a six hit shutout by Jack Morris, his eighth win. And California over Milwaukee 6-1. Don Sutton won his eighth game of the year. Top of the third here. Bottom third of the Expos batting order Tim Wallach at third base playing just inside of the bag with Reynolds a left handed batter up there. Galarraga with the play that's all for Reynolds. So now Floyd Yeomans has faced seven batters he's retired seven John Mizrock the catcher coming up. Astros so far hitting like they've got a plane to catch for their double park. Floyd throwing strikes and boy that's good to see because his lack of control at times is really 
the big flaw in his pitching, but he's sure overcome that so far tonight. Mizrock takes low ball one. About the Cubs making a triple play today. <laughs> Fifth inning against the Giants. Tell you how it happened here as we watch Mizrock bat. In the bottom of the fifth, the Giants' Mike Aldretti lined to pitcher Ed Lynch, who threw to third baseman Davey Lopes to double up Chili Davis. Lopes then threw to Terry Francona, the first baseman, to get Chris Brown. So the old line drive to start the triple play. That's good to hear Terry Francona involved in that and getting a chance to play. Right, he hadn't been playing much for the Cubs. Two and one pitch. It's fouled off. So Mizrock is sitting on the fastball. If Floyd gives him an off-speed pitch, that changeup, I think he would spin him right out of his shoes. He tried. It was too low. Three balls, two strikes. Pitcher Bob Nepper is on deck. Again, Ms. Rock with a pretty good cut, but he fouled it back. Three and two. It's the best swings we've seen Ms. Rock have in the series. Of course, he knows that most of the time he's going to get the heat, and he's sitting on it. Out on Mizrock as we look right into Mike Fitzgerald. He keeps getting a piece of it. Think about fastball pitchers and Yeomans included. Nolan Ryan, uh, a good example. Last night, Nolan uh, struck out a lot of batters early in the game, eight and four innings, and then he calmed down and didn't get too many after that. But they get tired, and their fastball starts to straighten out a little bit. Mizrock takes strike three. At least you hope they get tired <laughs> as a hitter. Well, that was a fastball, and Mizrock didn't like the location and took it. Bob Nepper coming up now against his mound opponent, Floyd Yeomans. Nepper. Nepper, pretty good fastball hitter. He hit quite a few in batting practice out of the park has five lifetime home runs and 48 lifetime RBIs but that was in BP that he was hitting the ball tonight let's see how he fares against Floyd one ball and one strike Two and one to Nepper. See what they'll do. Uh, Leadoff man Doran probably came back to the bench and said, "Boys, be ready. He's bringing it." And that fastball is really established right then on the ball club. Yeomans with a two-one. Two strikes on Nepper. <laughs> Two pitch. Wow, that was close. It's a thing you mentioned. Floyd is throwing strikes, and when he has missed, he hasn't missed by much, has he? Sure hasn't. It's the best I've seen him look all year. Never just got a piece of it, and fouled it back. Even as one hitter, he wasn't bringing it like he's bringing it tonight, as far as consistency is concerned. And in the strike zone. Right. Floyd pitched a one hit shutout against the Phillies on the 8th of June. He walked something like eight in that game. Pepper hits a fly ball, sending Reigns back in left. Nine have gone to the plate, and nine have been cast aside by Floyd Yeomans. 
And at the end of two and a half innings in Montreal, the Expos lead on Dawson's home run, one to nothing. That's Ken Maka, Expos coach, down behind home plate. Ken, can you hear us up here? No, I can't, Dave. You can't, huh? Yeah. Oh, you can. All I right. I can, well, yeah. All right, that's good. I'll tell you what we've heard most of so far tonight. The pounding of Mike Fitzgerald's mitt. How fast is Floyd throwing? Well, he's thrown uh, 27 fastballs, and only two of them have been under 90, and they were both to Nepper. So uh, when the pitcher got up there, he took a little bit off. So he's been throwing pretty hard. He's averaged, uh, I'd say, 91 average, and he's had 294. And he's been right around the plate with everything. Yeah, pretty much so. Uh, he's pitched some other games where he got a little wild with his fastball, and uh, Fitzgerald's mixed in the slider. And he's throwing that slider for a strike, but uh, uh, tonight he's getting that fastball over. In the first inning, they were taken, and uh, that didn't work out too well. He struck out the side. All right, we'll check with you a little later, Ken. Thanks a lot. Okay, then. Expos coach Ken Maka, who charts all of the games from down there behind the plate. He's got the speed gun on both pitchers, so next time around, we'll also ask about Nepper, and we'll recheck a couple of innings from now and see how Floyd is doing. We're going to find out all about Floyd Yeomans as a hitter because he'll lead off the bottom of the third for the Expos. Then we'll go to Reigns and Long. The Expos lead here one to nothing on Andre Dawson's first inning home run. I would wonder if they'd be clocking Nepper because Nepper is not a clock type pitcher. He, at best, he's going to be in the middle 80s to low 80s because uh, he's not overpowering as we mentioned. But uh, it's what you look for when you go up there to hit against a guy like Nepper. If you're if you're looking for the breaking ball, that makes the fastball a little bit quicker when he throws it. So you're not guessing against Nepper. You just say throw the ball and I'm going to hit it somewhere. But too, that's one of the interesting things about a pitcher like Bob Necker. You might find out that he's highly effective with an 87 mile an hour fastball. Well, that's for sure, or less. Or and, less, and 85. We're going to see a guy tomorrow night, Chris Welsh, who doesn't throw that hard, former Expo, who pitched for the Reds. And uh, they do it with finesse more than anything else, and know how. Floyd Yeoman's up here. He's got six hits and 35 at bats, including a home run earlier this year off the Philadelphia Phillies, Mike Maddox. Two strikes on Floyd. Well, Floyd looks for the fastball, and when he gets it, why he can hammer a little bit. A ball and two strikes. We have had just great weather for this Houston series. Last week, while the Expos were on the road, actually they were on the road for two weeks, the weather in Montreal was miserable. It's been great the last three nights. There's a base hit for Floyd Yeomans through the left side, just past Walling, just past Reynolds. He make a mistake on Floyd, and he can get a base hit. He's gotten several off Dwight Gooden this year. That one had eyes. It missed two pieces of leather going into left field. Yeomans gets into the warm-up jacket at first base. Tim Raines, the batter. Bounced out to the shortstop Reynolds in the first inning. It's like a cold night for Floyd. He's a Florida boy. <laughs> Lives some in California, too. Very pleasant night, but it is windy. The wind has been gusting around inside the stadium. Ball one to Reigns. Timmy talking with Duke and discussing his switch hitting. Reigns batting 311 right handed, 349 left handed. And he's popped this up. Reynolds goes back. The shortstop gloves it. Reigns is out. And Vance Law will come to the plate. Reynolds made a good play to take a hit away from Vance Law in the first inning. Checking in now with a 209 batting average. His major league lifetime is 254. So he's really having an off year. Batted 266 with the Expos in 1985. So here in his second year, he's fallen off. 
When you go into those slumps, hitting slumps, why it becomes mental after a while and you start changing an awful lot of things. Instead of just changing your thinking and getting in a groove to where you're just going to look for the ball and try and hit it hard somewhere, you try to get too smart. Buck Rogers was saying he feels it's so important for Vance himself to wind up this last weekend prior to the All-Star break swinging a good bat and have a pretty positive frame of mind heading into the second half. He said it's tough on all players if they spend those three days off at the All-Star break knowing they've had a bad first half. Well, no matter what Vance does this the rest of this week, he's going to have a bad first half, but if he finishes on a strong note, as you mentioned, Dave, why right. it would, will help him when he comes back next week. A drive toward left center, and Ganey's there, and he's got it. Ball lines out to the center fielder, two down, and Andre Dawson will back. with the first inning home run to put the Expos on the board. Well, I think we'll see Andre have some good swings. No question about that he likes to hit against Nepper, hitting three home runs this year off of him. One strike on Dawson. Club's all-time home run leader with 218. He's four RBIs away from tying Gary Carter. Gary had 794 Expos RBIs. The all-time leader, and Hawk will soon take over in that category. That's a foul ball. Yeomans ran it out. Floyd will come back to first. Hawk to the plate. Three afternoon games. The Braves beat the Phillies. We showed you the scores with Cincinnati over New York and Chicago beating San Francisco. The Braves also won their game, beat the Phillies. John Felsky had a chance to go over 500 for the first time since he took over as a manager of the Phillies. And He'll get the, the blame. Ball club was barely able to stay at 500 for 24 hours. They didn't make it for 24 hours. They've fallen one game under with that loss today. Philadelphia Press has made a big thing of that. But Felsky can't play uh, over 500. <laughs> I guess when they look out on the field and look at those nine players, they see John Felsky. Looks that way. John certainly doesn't swing the bat or pitch for the club. Ouch, that hit Dawson. You could tell by the camera, Mizrock sliding inside to get the ball, and it skimmed off Hawk. So he jogs on down to first base, hit by a pitch. Well, that ball at your feet sometimes a little tough to get out of the way when you plant that front foot like Andre does when he hits. Every hitter does that. And he got nicked a little bit. He's okay. Dawson nicked on the left shin. Goes to first base. Yeomans to second. Two outs. Yubi Brooks is the batter. And a pretty good story on the winning pitcher for Atlanta today. Former Blue Jay. Doyle Alexander winning for the Atlanta Braves. Line drive, base hit to left. Here comes Yeomans. He's been waved. He's going to score. Dawson goes to third. The throw will go to second to keep Brooks at first base. Well, Yubi got a broken bat base hit. Went right between the infielders. And Yubi gets his 51st RBI. We'll see it here. A little slider inside. Yubi breaks his bat, but gets enough to get gets enough of the ball to get it by Craig Reynolds. And the Expos lead two to nothing. Jomans really takes off. Scores easily. Tim Wallach is the batter. Yeah. 
Wallach lined out to the right fielder Kevin Bass in the first inning. Guys one here can Mizrock find it. Yes he found it over near the Expos on deck circle and Wallach is out. So runners are left at first and third but the Expos score a run on two hits in the inning and now at the end of three they're ahead of Houston two to nothing. Well that's the way things look in the National League East as a result of this afternoon's games. The Mets with an 11 game lead then the Bills 15 and a half out. Chicago 21 they moved up ahead of St. Louis and then Pittsburgh. The Cardinals and Pittsburgh are out west later tonight. Houston leading the Giants as a result of the San Francisco loss to the Cubs today. San Diego staying close and of course they made the two deals we talked about. Atlanta, Los Angeles, down there in the basement. Things not going at all well for the Dodgers, and if you look at the box scores these days, you hardly recognize the names. Here's the American League East with the Red Sox comfortably out in front, eight games ahead of the New York Yankees. Cleveland won today. They stay close along with the Orioles. And in the American League West, it's Gene Mox, California Angels, half game ahead of Bobby Valentine's Texas Rangers. Then it falls off. Chicago six and a half out. Kansas City. Royals have lost 11 straight. Club record. The defending world champions. Doran's up. He struck out in the first inning. Ball one to the Houston second baseman. The Expos lead here two to nothing as we begin the fourth inning. Floyd Yeomans gets the strike in there. Floyd has won his last four, eight of his last ten decisions. Pretty good fastball and location. One and two on Doran. Kept the hitters talking to themselves. You got a guy throwing that hard out there and that consistent with it. Well, you talk to yourself a lot. You got to get ready. Doran. And a tough chance here into no man's land. Well, that broke up the perfect game. First hit of the game for the Astros. A bloop out into right center by Bill Doran. That ball had a lot of hang time. I thought maybe Mitch might catch it, but Mitch was playing way over in left center and had a long way to go for it. Ty Ganey struck out in the first. Ah! Runner Doran is on the move. Got in at second base. His 29th steal. Floyd has a rather high leg kick and as a result the base runners can get a good jump on him. He gets rushes the ball to home plate pretty fast. But Doran with that quick come up slide watch great acceleration gets in there. One and one to Ganey. A couple of players out of the June 1979 draft in this lineup for Houston tonight. Their number one pick was John Misrock who's catching. Ty Ganey was their number two pick in 1979. And he's playing in center field for them tonight. Terry Poole's injured. Ganey punting one back to Yeomans. He looked at third through to first. Doran breaking quickly. Well, it didn't appear that Floyd gave that much of a shot at third. He had a play if he wheels and throws. The catcher tries to let him know on a play like that. You'll so see it. He looked. And said, nope, I'm not going to chance it. Looked Get like, the sure out. It looked like uh, Mike Fitzgerald yelled third. I would think so, because he had to play right in front of him, and if, and if Floyd guns it to third base, he's got an out. I'm not a great lip reader, but it just uh, <laughs> appeared that he was yelling third. Walling pops one up. Now let's see. Is Doran going to try He's to score try. on I bet you Here's try. the catch by Webster. Here comes a runner. Here comes a throw, and he is safe at the plate. Throw is not online. No, Mitch does not have a real strong throwing arm, and 
Reigns doesn't either. But Reigns is a little bit more accurate than Mitch. And that time they took advantage of the throwing arm of Webster's. Mitch catches the ball, puts everything on it he's got, but it wasn't enough. It was offline. That was a shallow fly ball. Two outs, nobody on base. And Glenn Davis, their first baseman, is up. Davis hit 20 home runs last year, 19 already this year. Ball one to Davis, who takes one up under the chin. Hit two home runs here Monday night. Two balls, no strikes to Davis. This is the latest into the season that an Astro has led the National League in home runs since the days of Jim Wynn. Now 3-0 on Davis. Jim Wynn led the league for the majority of the 1967 season. Set a club record with 37 home runs that year. Led the league until September 13th. So Davis has really put some numbers up there in the long ball department. Three and one on Davis. Something the Astros have missed since the days of Lee May, Cesar Cedeno, Doug Rader, and Jimmy Wynn, those home run hitters. Davis is on with a walk. The first base on balls issued by Floyd Yeomans. And it brings Kevin Bass to the plate. This note in from Toronto. Seattle playing the Blue Jays tonight. Mike Moore against Dave Steve. Boston. Oh, this is from Boston. I see. All right. Boston manager John McNamara has been ejected in the first inning at Fenway. Oakland against uh, the Red Sox. Kurt Young against Jeff Sellers. And McNamara's been thrown out of the game for some reason. We didn't get any details on that. By the way, in the Seattle game, Toronto's ahead one to nothing after one. Right here, 2-1 Expos. The Astros with a man on and Kevin Bass up. 2-0. Oh. Bass was hot in June, Duke, the National League Player of the Month, and he's carried it over into July. He certainly has, Dave, and uh, he's the kind of guy, being a switch hitter, and he has good speed. Also hits the long ball. He hadn't driven in as many as he probably would have liked, but 16 doubles. He came over, came up to the Astros from their minor league AAA club. We saw him about the time he joined the team, and he showed signs then of being a pretty good hitter. Smacks the ball here into the air, though, and Webster is under it. He's got it for the third out of the inning. One run on a hit by Bill Doran, a steal of second, went to third on that comebacker to the mound. That was a key play in the inning because then Walling hit the sacrifice fly. And the Astros are on the scoreboard. Expos lead 2-1. You're watching Expos Baseball on CBC. Buck Rogers, whose team is 44 and 36. He had the club 10 games over the 500 mark a couple of days ago. That's before Hal Lanier brought the Houston Astros to town. Now tonight, the Expos trying to salvage a game out of this three-game series. Here's Nepper to Mitch Webster. Strike one on Webster, who's batting at 271, hitting in the number six spot. And Nepper pitching out of turn a day early because DeShay's mother passed away, and he had to leave the ball club. Nolan Ryan was moved up last night to three days rest. It did not show. He pitched very well. And Bob pitching his type of ball game. He's given up two runs, but you know he could keep it maybe at three and keep his team in the game, and that's his job out there. Gives up more than three, he's got a good chance of losing. All right, Nepper pitched on Saturday. Floyd Yeoman's last start was last Friday, 4th of July. Webster hit that ball hard and past the third baseman Walling down to the left field corner. Cruz plays it out of the corner and Webster cruises into second base.
You know, although Bob Nepper is a classy pitcher, as we see this double down the left field line, the Expo hitters are breathing a sigh of relief tonight facing Nepper after facing Scott and Ryan, who were really bringing it the last two nights. So it's comfortable up there tonight. He might get you out, but it's not the fight it was the last two nights. Nepper out of the stretch, works to Galarraga with the runner on the move, and Galarraga bunts for it first. Nepper takes care of the play defensively as Webster goes on to third. It's too bad Andres bunted that ball because Mitch had third base stolen standing up. But Andres turned to bunt and bunted the ball very well, but it was a wasted at bat, really, because if he have sized up Webster's jump, as the experienced hitters would have, they'd have taken the pitch. Throw to first base, and the toe just got to the bat. Mike Fitzgerald with a shot here to drive in a run. Fitzgerald swings and pops it up to the right side. Davis calls for it. First baseman's got it. So with the infield in, Mike Fitzgerald popped it up. Two down, and Floyd Yeomans comes up. So that was a big out for Nepper. Fitzgerald upset at popping that pitch up. He wanted the sacrifice fly. He takes it out on the bat. Yeoman's waiting for his bat to be delivered by the bat boy. So Floyd uh, might have broken his bat in the third inning. As the bat boy appeared to come out of the clubhouse, there was a delay there a moment. And that's what they were waiting for. The delivery of Floyd's bat. Well, Floyd has five RBIs this year, a home run. No extra base hits other than, than the home run. Batting average almost to 200 now, hitting 194. Ball one to Floyd Yeomans. 2-1 Expos in the fourth inning. Center field, Ty Ganey back for this, and that's it for Floyd and the Expos. So the leadoff double by Mitch Webster goes by the boards here. No runs, a hit, and Webster was stranded at third base. At the end of four innings, the Expos lead Houston 2 1. At one time, one of the most feared hitters in the American League, Yogi Berra, but you look much better in that uniform to me, Yogi. Those pinstripes, uh, we didn't like the pinstripes in Brooklyn too much. Well, you know, my bubblegum cards work more now than I can do. <laughs> Yogi, you got a pretty good ball club over here, a little bit of power, and a couple of pitchers that can throw the ball pretty hard. Well, we think uh, we have, uh, Duke, we thought at spring training, we were, uh, you know, our pitcher was going to be the bad point, and so far it's been good to us. It has. Uh, I think we're leading the league in the earn run, you know, in the earn run department there. And, uh, They've done a heck, one heck of a job. Well, what about you over there instructing these hitters how to hit? I was watching you at the cage over there, and uh, no way anybody, you could teach anybody to hit like you did. Well, that's tough. I always said, <laughs> if you see the ball hit it, Duke, <laughs> that's what I always thought. And that was the way I hit, you know. I know you don't get many that way, you know. Uh, sometimes, you know, that high ball, you know, it looks good to you, and you swing at it. Yogi Barrett talking with Duke Snyder before the ball game. Yogi, a coach with this Houston ball club. Managed by Hal Lanier. Hal Lanier, of course, went to school at Whitey Herzog University. Jose Cruz up to lead it off with the Astros. Then Craig Reynolds and John Misrock. 2-1 game, Expos lead. That's out of play. Cruz over the years has been the RBI man for the Houston Ball Club. He's not having a good 1986. Two strikes on Cruz, no home runs, 28 RBIs. By the way, he needs 12 more RBIs for a total of 1,000 in his career. 
That's all for Cruz. He grounded out to short in the second, now strikes out in the fifth. Five strikeouts for Floyd, and here's a look at it. That pitch down and in, Cruz right over top of it, and he was overmatched. Floyd asking the plate umpire probably about the location of the pitch. No doubt about the fact that he swung at it. Cruz, I should say, was the one that was questioning the plate umpire. Greg Reynolds fouling one back, strike one. He bounced out to the first baseman, Galarraga, in the third inning. A ball and a strike. years ago it looked like Reynolds was just about finished with the Houston Ball Club and that was of course when Dickie Thon firmly established himself as a big league shortstop and one of the fine offensive players in the league then came that tragic injury to Thon which has affected his eyesight and Reynolds career received a boost he got a whole lot of playing time Had played in very few games up until the 1984 season. And then he became the full-time shortstop again. Had a good year. Had a good year last year. And now platoons with Dickie Thon. Two-two pitch, and Reynolds hits a ball to the right side. Law plays it to Galarraga, two down. Yeoman's ahead by a run in this game. He got Mizrock looking at strike three in the third inning. Oh, Floyd, see how high he kicks that front left leg? And then really gets the power off the back right leg. He has good sized legs, big thighs. And that gives him more push off the pitching rubber. Ball one to Mizrock, who was the Astros' number one draft. June of 1979. Out of Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. I'm sure you know where that is. Well, everyone in the world knows all about Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Except because me. Because that's where the world's most famous groundhog lives. Puxatawney Phil. <laughs> Three and oh. I learned something new again tonight. They check him out each spring, and if he... On a certain date, I've forgotten what that date is, but on a certain date, if he comes up out of his hole and cast a shadow on the earth, they can forecast a certain amount of weather. If there is no shadow, the weather goes the other way. Now, you'll have to check with Puxatawney Phil to find out whether the shadow brings good or bad weather. I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> Mizrock with the base on balls. On with two outs in the fifth, and Bob Nepper up. The pitcher fly to left in the third inning. Is that an eastern Pennsylvania or western? Uh, east central. East central, okay. <laughs> now, Lanier out talking to the plate umpire, Dana DeMuth, about something. Couldn't venture a guess of what. doesn't seem to be bothered too much by it, whatever it was. He had a comment and a smile. One ball and one strike. Two on Nepper. Quite a battle for a hitter, and especially a pitcher, to hit against 
guy like Yeoman. Floyd puts Nepper away. Two strikeouts in the inning. Six in the game. And one left on by Houston. Midway in the fifth. The Expos lead 2-1. ready to go here in the fifth inning and the Expos coming to bat leading 2-1. The Expos will be entertaining Pete Rose's Cincinnati Reds. Pete's going to come in here smiling. Well, he certainly will beating the Mets three in a row. No one has done that this year and uh, Pete of course uh, will have upset on his mind as far as the Expos are concerned for the next four days and he's going to pitch a couple left-handed pitchers at the Expos have handled a little bit in the past. Chris Welsh, they had him, they hit against him, and they've done pretty well. And it uh, should be an interesting series. We're going to see Bill Gullickson, I believe, on Saturday night, former Expo. So it's going to be a fun series. There's no question about that. The Reds starting to play a lot better baseball. Top of the Expo's order coming up. We look at Les Moss. Yogi. And there's Yogi. He said, I'm still taking those ugly pills. <laughs> He's a good man. He is that. He's got a terrific baseball mind. <laughs> and I'm sure he's been a big help to Hal Lanier. Well, uh, Jogi's loose. He knows the game exceptionally well. Rain's 0 for 2 tonight. Started out this ball game with a 14 game hitting streak. Tim's average now 333 as he steps in against Nepper. By the way, I want to correct myself. When you asked about Puxitani, I had said East Central, didn't I? I think See, so. See, I naturally think of all good things happening in the eastern part of the state. Actually, Puxitani is West Central. I just happen to be geared toward the east. <laughs> it's because you live there. Right. <laughs> well, Reigns almost loses the bat on this swing. See that one hand come off? Managed to hold on. And sometimes that hurts a little bit when that hand comes off the bat and you try to hold on. You're better off losing the bat sometimes. Now look at the equipment he's got on. Sweatbands, hitting gloves, and tonight's not a night unless you're the pitcher that you're going to sweat much. But all the, all of them wear those sweatbands. They're very colorful. Daryl Strawberry probably has the longest sweatbands in the league. They almost go up to well, his elbows. Yeah, he wears back to back bands. Yeah, on both arms. <laughs> Doubleheader in the sweatband department Boy. on each arm. Well, he has long arms. <laughs> Strawberry's really helped the Mets lately. He's hitting the ball exceptionally well. He's going to make the All Star team. Tim Rain didn't like didn't that. Didn't think so. Uh, from our angle. I don't know what Tim thought about that pitch, whether it was inside or what. That was a big breaking ball, wasn't it? That thing started up uh, almost letter high and handed down maybe below the knees a little bit. One out, the first strikeout for Bob Nepper. Vance Laws bounced to short, lined out to center. One to law. The American League starting lineup has been announced for the All Star Game, and the 57th edition of the game will be played next Tuesday night at the Astrodome in Houston. So this Houston ball club is actually hosting the Astros as an organization, hosting the All Star Game. One and two on law.
Lance Parrish, who hit two home runs today, Duke, at Minnesota in that 7 to nothing Tiger win. He's going to be the catcher on that team. That's all for Vance Law. Oh, that's a good choice. Lance Parrish is a very good catcher. We see Law thinking the slider might break in slide inside, but it stayed on the plate. And I think he was fooled by the pitch. I think he's looking for something else. So two are caught looking here, Reigns and Law, and here's Andre Dawson who hit his 14th home run of the season in the first inning. Ouch. Foul ball down and into the dirt and bounced right up, glanced off Hawk. We'll see how much of it we can pick up here as he chops that ball into the dirt. It was out of the strike zone. Caught him right in the side of the head. Right near the ear. So as Dawson gets back in, we'll take you through that American League lineup. Wally Joyner at first base. Yeah, first sure. rookie to be elected to the starting position. Then Lou Whitaker at second base. George Brett at third. Cal Ripken at short and an outfield of Kirby Puckett, Ricky Henderson, and Dave Winfield. I don't think George Steinbrenner voted, but Winfield uh, made it. Winfield wouldn't have been in there if Steinbrenner had voted. <laughs> Can you imagine an, an owner getting on a guy like Dave Winfield for not driving in enough runs and getting enough clutch hits the years that he has had for Mr. Steinbrenner? Every hitter goes into RBI slump every once in a while. Well, he had it all figured out, too, didn't he? He had the batting averages against the uh, top uh, division teams. And Batting average against the lower place clubs. Bill Doran with the fielding play. That's all for Dawson and the Expos in the fifth. They go in order against Bob Depper. And through five innings at Olympic Stadium, the Expos are ahead 2-1. his ninth game since being called up from their triple-a club he's done a good job with the bat hitting at 391 nine hits and this is Dave Van Horn reminding you that our next CBC telecast comes up on Saturday the 26th of July seven o'clock the Expos take on the Reds we'll be there to bring you all the action <laughs> Floyd Yeomans Ready to go after the top of the Houston batting order, Bill Doran. And there you see what Floyd has done compared to what Bob Nepper's done through five. Amongst those six strikeouts for Floyd, he struck out the side in the first inning. Bill Doran, one out of two, fanned in the first. Got a base hit, stole second. Went to third on Ty Ganey's bouncer back to the mound in the fourth inning. Yeoman spun, had a play on Doran at third base, elected to go to first. That cost Floyd because Doran then scored on a sacrifice fly by Danny Walling. Danny Walling. One strike on Doran. Galarraga with the play, and that's all for Doran. Well, Doran hit that ball very hard, but Andre's playing where he could reach it, and being a right-handed thrower, glove in his left hand, it made it a lot easier for him because this ball is hit a lot harder than it looked. Good play by Galarraga. Ty Ganey up. He has struck out and bounced to the mound. One strike on Ganey. The Houston club is playing 500 against the East, 19 and 19. But they won five of eight against the Expos. Ganey's going to have to start the bat a little bit quicker on that fastball away. He's taking it right out of Fitzgerald's glove. That 
That's all for Ganey as he's caught looking. Seven strikeouts for Floyd Yeoman. Good fastball out over the plate. And the ball runs a little bit away. And Fitzgerald pulls it back a little bit. Just in case the umpire was in doubt. Just 22 years old. Born and raised in Tampa. Moved to Fontana, California for his junior and senior years in high school before being drafted by the Mets. One strike on Walling. If you're wondering how the Astros who lead the West have done against the Mets who lead the East. They played eight times and the Mets have won six of those eight. Two strikes on Walling. A little slider that time didn't break much, but it fooled Walling. Mitch Webster under this. The Astros go one, two, three. Nothing across here in the sixth. After five and a half innings in Montreal, Floyd Yeomans leading Bob Nepper 2-1. Le joueur de premier but, Bob Horner, des Bras d'Atlanta, a été élu le joueur de la semaine dans la Ligue nationale. Horner est devenu le 11e joueur de l'histoire à taper quatre circuits dans un même match. C'était dimanche dernier contre les Expos à Atlanta. Il a fait marquer 8 points et en a compté lui-même 8 au cours de la semaine. Bob Horner. Un exploit que nos téléspectateurs ont pu suivre euh, lors de notre reportage télévisé en direct d'Atlanta dimanche dernier. Maintenant, Claude, euh, un coup d'œil euh, de nouveau aux résultats peut-être cette fois dans l'Américaine. Dans la Ligue américaine, on vous a dit la victoire de Phil Necro 6 à 3 contre Chicago. Californie l'a emporté 6 à 1 contre Milwaukee. Dans certaines de lanceurs gagnants, sa huitième de l'année, le perdant Igeria 10 à 7. Et Détroit a eu raison de Minnesota 7 à 0. Lance Parrish, deux circuits, Coles en a frappé un, le gagnant Morris, 8 et 6. Et à Boston, après deux matchs complets, c'est 0 à 0 entre Oakland et Boston, et John McNamara est expulsé en première manche. Je ne sais pas pourquoi, mais... <rire> Ça n'a pas très aimé. Je crois que c'est 2 en 2 ce soir. Oh, c'est un super bel lancer. La tour est bien revenue vers le coin extérieur. Neuf coups sûrs contre les Astros cette saison, tous à Montréal. La balle est en jeu, chargée par Walling qui échappe. La balle, le coureur est sauf. Ça serait sûrement un coup sûr. Danny Walling avait presque pas de chance de retirer Yubi Brook. Surtout que sa seule chance, c'était de retirer avec sans que la balle touche son gant. Regardez la balle qui bondit très lentement. Il va tenter de capter la balle de la main nue. Il vient pour lancer la balle, il échappe. Alors c'est un coup sûr. C'est là qu'on peut apprécier les talents défensifs d'un gars comme Tim Wallace. Wallace, euh, c'est rare qu'il va rater son coup de ce qu'il un jeu comme celui-là. Et Brooks, il se retrouve avec un match de trois coups sûrs, euh, trois en trois jusqu'à maintenant. Wallace, 0 en 2 ce soir. Point extérieur, un tir gardé bas, prise. Brooks a commencé le match avec une moyenne de 327. 3 en 3. Relais assez vif de Nepper à Davis au premier. Voilà qu'il a déjà le nom de Nepper deux fois d'inscrit dans son livre avec des coups de circuit. Oh, c'était tentant. Mais finalement, il laisse passer la balle une et une. Il avait bien jugé. Mmh, à l'intérieur. Deuxième prise. Même si on est fort, des fois, on est incapable de retenir son élan. Et voir là, je pense qu'il avait frappé cette balle et travaillé chez les voltigeurs. <rire> Donc, une balle de prise, alors que Nepper reprend sa place. Brooks, toujours au premier. Il n'a pas une avance importante en direction du deuxième coussin. 
C'est effleuré. La balle est captée par le receveur. Mais le Rocker traite. Le troisième retrait sur des prises pour Bob Napper. Un tir hors de la zone des prises. C'était à la hauteur des épaules. Et voilà que le croyait bon à frapper, mais il a simplement effleuré. Mitch Webster a reçu des instructions de son collègue au troisième. Et il est prêt. C'est lance au oh, bas la double retraite possible. C'est allé de Reynolds à Doran. Doran remet à Davis. Et c'est un retrait 6, 4, 4, 3 qui met fin à la sixième manche des Expos. Il n'y a pas eu point à coup sûr. Personne n'a été laissé sur les sentiers. Six manches de compléter. Montréal mène 2-1 dans ce match qui vous parvient, mesdames et messieurs, en direct du stade du Parc Olympique. Depuis la septième manche, dans un instant, alors que Yomens y va de quelques lancers, je vais mentionner que le mercredi 30 juillet, c'est la clinique de sang Roger Savard. La clinique de sang annuelle des Expos, nommée à la mémoire de Roger Savard, se déroulera au stade olympique, donc de 10h à 19h et est organisé en collaboration avec les épouses des joueurs. Et les joueurs circuleront parmi les donneurs au cours de la durée de la clinique. Donc, c'est mercredi, le mercredi 30 juillet, la clinique de sang Roger Savard, au stade du Parc Olympique. Davis, Bass et Cruz, début de la 7e. 2 à 1, Montréal. 0 à 1 ce soir, Davis. À sa dernière présence, a obtenu un but sur balle. Davis qui est quatrième dans la nationale avec un pourcentage de puissance de 518. L'élan. Il est bon de rappeler que Houston n'a qu'un coup sûr. Fausse balle. 0 et 2 jusqu'au grillage. Un coup sûr, c'est un coup sûr chanceux. Ensuite, vol de but, retrait à l'avant-champ, ballon sacrifice, ça fait un point. La rapidité de Bill Doran. As-tu pu remarquer euh, l'évolution de Yeoman au monticule? Il, a, il me semble être beaucoup plus sûr de ses moyens. Mais c'était retrait sur Ella, premier retrait de cette septième manche. Ça lui en fait huit retraits sur des prises. Encore une fois, sa bague glissante et Davis a été complètement déjoué. Vraiment, j'avoue, depuis qu'il a fait face à Godin, oui. Yeoman semble très, très confiant. Il, il s'est probablement dit, si je suis capable de battre mon ami Godin, je suis capable de battre n'importe qui. Exact. Très juste. On va lancer à passe balle. Il y a quelque chose qu'il faut surveiller aussi dans son élan. Avant, il décochait un tir une fois près de son oreille, l'autre fois éloigné, une autre fois son coup de baisser. Maintenant, tout s'est lancé, semble décocher à peu près du même endroit. Là, c'est son changement de vitesse. Et ça a marché, hein? Une et une. Encore une fois, vous voyez, il étouffe la balle. Basse est complètement déjoué. Très haut, la balle est probablement en jeu. Longue course de Galaraga. Près de la brille. De mes pieds, capte la balle, deux frais. Peut-être qu'on pourra revoir. C'est pas que l'un, ça pourrait me donner une caméra qui est au sol tout près de l'abri. Il, 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 il y aurait pu y avoir collision parce que Fitzgerald était tout près. Et là, finalement, lorsqu'il a entendu Galaraga et les joueurs dans l'abri, il a laissé la balle à Galaraga et lui a capté juste avant d'entrer <rire> dans l'abri avant de disparaître à nos yeux. Il était attendu à bras ouverts. Ça a deux beaux jeux de Galaraga. Trois avec le relais de Yubi Brooks tantôt. Rosé Cruz, premier lancé qui était haut à échapper. À Fitzgerald, on a l'impression que c'est passé à travers son gant. Cruz n'a aucun circuit depuis le 16 septembre 85 à Atlanta. Ce soir, il est 0 en 2, ça va y aller 2, 251. Avec deux reprends et personne devant lui. Oh. Voilà un signe de maturité. Il y a une balle rapide qui était beaucoup euh, trop haut. Et là, il revient avec une balle cassante, sa balle glissante. Et c'est une prise. Alors, Cruz a été complètement déjoué. En ligne. Maintenant, maintenant, il a vu une rapide, une glissante, une rapide. Alors, c'est le temps pour son changement de vitesse. Et il l'a très bien maîtrisé. 
Euh, vraiment, il m'a surpris ce soir parce qu'il a utilisé peut-être 15 à 20 fois son changement de vitesse. Aurélio Lopez qui fait chaud. Avec une balle de prise. Voilà le lancer. La balle échappe. Ah, c'est dur. Ça peut-être chaud ça auparavant. C'est deux et deux. Alors ouais. deux partout. C'est ça. Là, il a tenté d'utiliser son changement de vitesse. Et il a accéléré son élan. Il a accéléré son élan plutôt que de rester comme il était avant. Vous voyez la balle qui tombe trop ouais. rapidement. Parce que lorsqu'il prend bien son temps avec son élan, euh, il, il dégage ses hanches, ses épaules pointent vers la map. Ça n'arrive pas. Maintenant, il a une bonne coordination, mon petit Roula. Galahaga, sans aide, complète de, de, la deuxième fois dans cette dominante. Il complète le retrait au premier. Et ça met fin à la septième manche. Les Astros, ils étaient toujours 2 à 1 Montréal. En 1972, Yogi Berra est intronisé au Panthéon du baseball. À 5 pieds 8 et 190 livres, il n'avait pas le physique d'un joueur de baseball, mais quelle carrière il a connue avec les Yankees de New York. Il a connu toute une carrière avec les Yankees. En 1947, il succédait à Bill Dickey au poste de receveur. De saison, il a conservé une moyenne de 285 et cogné 358 circuits. Il a connu 5 saisons de 100 points produits et 11 saisons de 20 circuits ou plus. Il a aussi participé à 14 séries mondiales, un record. Après la saison 1963, Yogi Berra prenait sa retraite après 18 saisons dans le baseball majeur. Un yogi qui a, a pris de l'âge, évidemment. On se connaît toujours. C'est une des figures les plus familières euh, du monde du baseball depuis 40 ans, au moins. Ah oh, oui, et puis, après avoir été congédié par les Yankees, là, eh bien, M. McMullen, le propriétaire des Astros, lui a demandé, lui qui est son voisin, lui a demandé de venir aider Al Lanier. Le premier frappeur est euh, Andrés Galarraga, qui euh, est 0 en 2 ce soir. Seulement que trois coups sûrs, dont un circuit dans ses 12 derniers matchs. La moyenne est passée à 247. L'offrant de Nepper a été effleuré, je pense, une et une. Fitzgerald et Yeoman vont suivre. Deuxième moitié de la septième manche, les expos même 2 à 1. Il y a eu toute une peur dimanche euh, lorsqu'il a été touché au derrière de la tête par le lancer de Deadman. La balle est allée bondir jusqu'à l'arrêt court. Il y en a eu peur, nous aussi, puis euh, je peux s'imaginer à sa place que c'était sur euh, hum, un lancer qui était il ne me semblait pas que c'était accidentel non deux balles une prise bien frappé c'est en lieu sûr après deux bons récupérés par Pagini et encore une fois les expos un coureur au premier coup pas de retraite ça c'est le genre d'élan que Buck Rogers aime Galaraga lorsque le Galaraga s'élance comme ça vous voyez le lancer est bas, c'est un bon tir, ça il s'est penché, il est allé chercher la balle et le Napper, lui, s'est penché à son tour pour ne pas se faire frapper à la tête, mais la balle a été cognée très solidement. C'est un bon lancer, un lancer bas. Fred Gerald, le frappeur suivant. Balle, c'était bas. Mike a une moyenne de 400, c'est-à-dire 26 coups sûrs et 20 points produits depuis le 14 juin. Beau travail. Cette fois, il a été retiré deux fois à Davis. Donc, au 
joueur de premier but, ce qui est quand même assez inusité. Deux balles, aucune prise. Est-ce qu'il y a des signaux là-dedans? On va le voir dans un instant. S'il y a un signal, ça va être le tour de frappe. Le lancer, la balle est frappée, deux bons, par la double retraite possible. Oui, et c'est complété. C'est allé de Reynolds à Doran et de Doran à Davis. Mais bon, sur un jeu comme ça, le coureur au premier n'a vraiment pas de chance. Regardez bien Galaraga, où il va s'étendre de, de tout son long. Reynolds remet la balle, vous voyez, il a déjà commencé à glisser sur le gazon synthétique. Et il n'avait aucune chance, il était resté debout une fraction de seconde de plus. Il aurait peut-être pu se faire toucher par le, le joueur. Le deuxième but qu'elle remettait au premier. Alors, il a dû s'étendre de tout son long très vite. Yeomans avec deux retraits et personne sur les sentiers. En huitième manche, c'est Neffer qui est le troisième frappeur des Astros. Probablement, c'est possiblement la dernière fois qu'on le voit à l'œuvre ce soir. Tout dépendra, de, je suppose, de ce qui se passera. En huitième, mais si jamais euh, les Astros avaient le courage sur les sentiers. Le Moon est passé à 189, elle était de 171 en début de match. Il est 1 en 2 ce soir. Voilà, le lancer est à l'extérieur. Frank Dipino et Larry Anderson sont à l'œuvre dans l'entour réservé au releveur des Astros. Oh! <rire> Deuxième prise, une et deux. Il en a servi totalement à Oasso que c'était son tour maintenant. Oui. C'est lancé sur le chef des jeux complètement. C'est rare qu'on lance un changement de vitesse à un lanceur. C'est tout pour étendu, ça devrait être illégal. Ici, c'était retrait sur décision qui met fin à la septième manche des expos. Il n'y a pas eu de points. Un coup sûr, personne n'a été laissé sur les sentiers. Déjà sept manches de jouer. Et Montréal mène 2-1 dans ce match qui vous parvient, mesdames et messieurs, en direct du stade du Parc Olympique. La huitième marche va commencer dans un moment. C'est Craig Reynolds qui sera le, le premier frappeur. Et là, on pourrait se, se faire avec des changements dans la formation. Oui, parce que le lanceur, comme tu l'as dit tantôt, n'est pas le troisième. On voit déjà Louis Meadows, le numéro 26, en arrière de Misera qui est là. Alors, ils sont trois de front pour affronter trois humains. Ça va bien jusqu'à maintenant. Et il lancera au gaucher Reynolds, qui est 0 en 2 ce soir. C'est pas compliqué. Il y a un coup sûr par Houston jusqu'à maintenant. Reynolds qui avait été le premier choix des pirates il y a déjà 15 ans. Il n'y a pas de circuit depuis le 9 juin dernier. C'est à, à San Diego. Il a trois circuits seulement cette saison. Dans son cas, ça a l'air déception. Très haut, c'est ça en fait. Une balle, une prise. Mais Rock, <rire> deux joueurs au cercle d'attente. Il faut qu'il y en ait au moins un, mais est-ce qu'on peut en avoir deux? Oui, Louis Meadows est là, lui, pour le lanceur. Ça dégoûte dire un peu. Deux balles, une prise. Ça. Très haut. Dans ce est parti de loin. Et c'est euh, Webster, finalement, qui a le dernier mot, comme il se doit. Dans cette circonstance, un frais. Watson va trouver sa position, donc on voit le centre. Mais Rock est déjà prêt. Mais Rock est 0 en 1, il a eu un but sur balle. Prise! Il n'a pas perdu trop de vélocité à jusqu'à présent, Floyd Yeoman. Il est encore au-dessus de 90, sûrement. Non seulement il est impeccable, mais il n'a pas eu tellement de lancers à effectuer jusqu'à maintenant. Ça est en relatif. On n'a pas fait le calcul, sauf que... 
On n'a pas vu souvent de trois balles de prise. Et son style est beaucoup amélioré. Larry Bernard a travaillé fort avec lui, Buck Rogers aussi. Ça s'appelle des dividendes. Non, c'est ça, à l'extérieur. Deuxième balle. Qui aurait dit qu'au début de juillet, c'est le Yeomans qui aurait le titre de victoire chez les Expos? Il n'y en a pas de qu'à l'agager là-dessus euh, au camp d'entraînement. Hein? Ah bon, <rire> oui. Il est parti trois, trois défaites, pas de victoire. Donc, mon cas, il y a un début euh, difficile, mais on a été patient comme il se doit. Il n'y a pas des erreurs encore, il n'est pas parfait. Mais, quel potentiel. Si c'est trois pas d'une prise. Ça. De lancer. Coin extérieur. Compte complet. Lorsqu'il pointe son épaule gauche vers, le, vers la cible, l'épaule touche presque son menton. Oh, pas mal. Ça, ça lui donne beaucoup de force dans son lancer aussi. Il ses jambes. Tout, tout fonctionne bien pour lui par les temps qui courent. Donc voilà, avec un compte complet, la fin de Yeoman, deux sur balle. Deux sur balle avec trois balles de prise. Donc M. Rock s'en va au premier. C'est deuxième but sur balle accordé par Yeoman au receveur des Astros qui frappait pour 172 de moyenne. Et là, M. Rock va disparaître puisqu'on a un coureur euh, suppléant. Tony Walker. Walker. Tony Walker va aller courir pour lui. Et Louis Meadows va frapper. Meadows a un coup sûr en quatre depuis qu'on l'a rappelé. Et son coup sûr, c'était contre les Expos. C'était hier, son premier dans le baseball majeur. Et chaque fois qu'il a été utilisé, c'était comme frappeur suppléant, un en quatre. Donc, de la vitesse au premier. Avec un retrait. Tinta qui était à peu près... Il a regardé le match tranquillement, il n'a pas été occupé ce soir. Là, ce droit d'être un peu plus aux aguets. Les relais de Yeomans qui va empêcher de tous les moyens possibles. Avec un, un score de 2-1, va empêcher avec un retrait en huitième par tous les moyens. Le coureur de voler le deuxième. Ici, c'est une prise de décision des notes de Mew. Il y a un manque d'expérience au premier but. Walker a quatre buts volés en cinq tentatives. Alors, il n'y a pas beaucoup d'expérience, mais il est vite. Et Alonir aime prendre des chances, alors il pourrait avoir le coup de frappe, le vol de but, un des deux. Oh, c'est plus serré cette fois. Hein? Très serré, parce que Yeoman a failli prendre Walker alors qu'il faisait un petit saut pour se placer les deux pieds avant de s'en aller au deuxième. Et il a fait un bon relais au premier. Il est revenu juste à temps. J'ai eu la main d'autre. C'est le secret d'un lanceur, c'est pour prendre des coureurs à contre-pied. Il faut surveiller, puis lorsque le coureur lève un pied pour se placer un peu plus loin, c'est là qu'on lance au but. Se lancer. Prise, une deuxième. C'est un tir qui était gardé bas, qui semblait vers l'extérieur du marbre. On ne peut pas demander un tir plus parfait, à la hauteur du clou au point extérieur. Aucune balle de prise. <rire> pas d'audace, hein, Yeoman? Oui, Galaraga a failli être menotté au premier coussin. <rire> Ça arrive à 4, 90 000 à l'heure, là. Ils sont pas loin. Avec le coureur est parti, c'est le coureur est parti. Le relais arrive, semble-t-il. Attends, non, le coureur est sauf. La balle a échappé à Brooks. Et la balle était dans le cadre de Brooks, mais il ne faut pas oublier que Yobi Brooks est blessé. Il a un attaquant spécial au pouce gauche. Il a beaucoup de difficultés à à maîtriser son gant et la balle a plus sortir de son gant mais la balle était là avant oui. regardez Walker qui plonge il plonge dans le gant de Ruby Brooks et la balle en est sortie encore une fois un bon relais de Fitzgerald Brooks est là capte la balle et il n'avait plus de balle dans le gant c'est une balle de prise hein? Meadows un très courant au deuxième. C'est bas. Deux et deux. Maintenant, s'il y a une balle qui a frappé au champ extérieur, il va falloir la ramener rapidement, cette balle. Et seul dans ce un bon bras dans les trois voltigeurs. Et on doute que 
Le frappeur puisse frapper la balle au champ droit. Normalement, il, il frappe au champ gauche. La balle est frappée. Voilà, quel superbe jeu. Le relais a pris Oups, non, le coureur est sauf. Et malgré tout, il a limité les dégâts. Il a limité les dégâts. Il a empêché Walker de marquer. Et il a empêché Louis Meadows, qui est rapide, de se rendre au deuxième but. C'est un superbe jeu. Il est lancé, euh, tir des espérés en se relevant même pas. Je pense qu'il était à jeu lorsqu'il a effectué son tir vers le premier but. Mais Walker n'a pas bougé du deuxième. Lui. Un point, ça. Regardez l'arrêt. On y reviendra peut-être plus tard, alors que Doran est le frappeur. Il est bon de rappeler que Doran a réussi le seul coup sûr des Astros. Oui, il est encore à jouer lorsqu'il a effectué son tir. Oh, C'était le seul coup sûr jusqu'au moment où... Euh, euh, Meadows a fait contact avec la, la balle ici, il s'en est tiré avec un coup sur au centre ailleurs. Le lancer à Doran, c'est une balle. Pour un au premier et au deuxième avec un frein. En ligne. Une et une. Sur le point marqué par les Astros en quatrième manche, avait commencé avec un simple de Doran, il avait volé le deuxième poussin. Gainé ensuite sur euh, une balle dont le relais avait été fait de Yeoman à Galahaga au premier. Ça avait mis à Dorin de se rendre au troisième, ou non Oui, au troisième, et ensuite Warling avait donné à Dorin de Lima. Le lancer Hum, mmh, oui, deuxième. Hein. Pour le moment, le, le but volé de Walker n'a pas fait de dommage. Ça, ça fait mal. Les coureurs sont partis, il y en a moins un, le relais au troisième. Le coureur est sauf. Autre but volé, Walker. Walker semble s'être blessé en plongeant au troisième poussin. Regardez sa réaction. On ne s'occupe pas de lui au deuxième, il dit je m'en vais vers le troisième. Et il plonge et il a donné euh, contre le jeu de Wallet, j'ai l'impression. Moi, Wallet, il s'est cogné contre le jeu de Wallet. Walker? Oui. Alors moi, en repassant le gant, euh, voilà qu'il est appelé à terre à la tête. Regardez, regardez la façon qu'il est entré au troisième. Là, il plonge. Regardez le genou de Wallach. J'ai l'impression que Wallach euh, avait le genou. Retrait! Quelle lance importante de celle-ci! C'est tout pour Gorn. Encore une fois, des choses euh, sans... Euh, et c'est un gros retrait pour Yeoman. Et là, Mike Fitzgerald, ça va au monticule. Buck Rogers, ça va au monticule aussi. Parce qu'ici, il y a plusieurs possibilités. Premièrement, il y a la possibilité du double vol. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait si jamais le coureur du premier but, Louis Meadows, s'en va vers le deuxième? Il est rapide. Est-ce qu'on va tenter de retirer au deuxième? Est-ce qu'on va garder la balle dans la mitaine? Est-ce qu'on va lancer au troisième? Vince Law va être au courant. Yubi Brooks va être au courant. Alors, le message de Rogers est livré. On va voir la, la stratégie maintenant. Parce que Gainé est rapide ici. Hein? Avec Pike Gainé et des coureurs aux extrémités. Deux retraits. Huitième manche. La marque est 2-1 Montréal. Une situation délicate. L'élan. Avec un Gainé qui visait loin et qui euh, rate son tour. Pour Gainé, c'est sa 13e présence au bâton. Courant est parti. Prise. On ne s'est pas préoccupé de Meadows. Oh, il lui donnait le deuxième but. Le frappeur, c'est lui qui est le gars le important dans cette manche. Ça, euh, ça, ça doit ressembler au message que Gomez a eu. Hein. C'est ça. Maintenant, il lui a servi deux balles rapides. Est-ce qu'on reste avec la balle rapide? Là, il y a un coureur au deuxième, c'est le de s'assurer que Yeoman ne se trompe pas dans les signaux. Il se souvient bien de la clé avec un coureur au deuxième parce qu'un mauvais lancé, c'est le pointage égal. Aucune balle, deux prises, deux retraits, deux coureurs sur les sentiers. Huitième manche, la foule qui encourage Yeoman. Avec 0-2, il est bien placé. Le lancé. On va en appel au troisième. Il n'y a pas eu de réaction. C'est une balle, oui, mais tout. Il n'y a pas d'élan, là. Charlie Wallace, non. 
Le violon a tenté de mettre toutes les chances de son côté. Avec une balle de prise, les encouragements qui continuent. Voilà le lancer à l'extérieur. C'est un beau geste de Fitzgerald, mais ça se tenait pas aussi. 2 et 2. Deux balles, deux prises, deux frais, deux courants sur les sentiers. Voilà comment ça se présente. Le home run est prêt. Le lancer. La balle est frappée chez les spectateurs. À l'arrière, toujours deux deux. Alors, vous savez aussi ce que Buck Rogers a dit à Fitzgerald et à Yeoman. Le meilleur lancer du Yeoman, c'est sa balle rapide. On sert des balles rapides à taille gainée. Et les cinq lancers qu'on lui a servis, chaque fois, c'est une balle rapide. Balladon avec toujours deux balles de prise. C'est peut-être le match qui se lance pas mal. Le lancer, l'énorme le retrait. Ça va faire la troisième manche. Ah ben, c'est troisième retrait, ça va faire la huitième manche des Astros. Il n'y a pas eu de point. Un coup sûr, aucune erreur et deux coureurs laissés sur les sentiers. Sept manches qui lui de jouer. Encore une fois, on va se superbe dans le bras rapide de Yeoman. La balle qui sort au point derrière, on ne peut rien y faire. Le score est 2-1 Expo. Mesdames et messieurs, cela vous parvient en direct du stade du bac olympique à Montréal. Le prochain reportage du baseball des Expos sera présenté samedi prochain, le 12 juillet à 19h30, heure avancée de test, alors que les Reds de Cincinnati affronteront les Expos de Montréal au stade du parc olympique. Les amateurs auront l'occasion de voir à l'œuvre Dave Parker, qui est parmi les meneurs pour les circuits et les points produits. Donc, un rendez-vous à ne pas manquer, samedi prochain, 12 juillet, 19h30, alors que les Expos de Montréal recevront les Reds de Cincinnati. Alors qu'on va prendre la deuxième moitié de la huitième manche, voilà Guillaume qui a fait un superbe travail jusqu'à maintenant et on va vous dire encore, il y a des changements en défense du côté des Astros et on aura un nouveau lanceur évidemment au monticule. Aurelio Lopez qui a déjà lancé pour Saint-Louis, il est tel qu'il est en gauche de Détroit et Houston lui a fait signer un contrat il y a à peu près deux mois. Pour Lopez, c'est un 15e présent chaque fois comme releveur, il a trois matchs préservés, une victoire, une défaite. Et euh, il a 14 retraits sur des prises et seulement 5 buts sur balle en 23 mars. C'est un lanceur de balle rapide. Il a perdu euh, peut-être 5 ou 6 livres au cours de l'hiver. Il est descendu de 260 à 250. Mais il a encore un bon bras. Donc, euh, HP est, euh, est d'office maintenant pour poste de receveur. Mais on, on surveille Henri Lopez. Voilà, HP dont je vous parlais, le numéro 14. Et au champ de droite, c'est Meadows, oui, Meadows. Reigns est le premier frappeur, deuxième moitié de la huitième manche avec des expos de nom par un. Bah, c'est le vote du joueur de centre maintenant. Là, et dans ce vont suivre. Reigns n'a pas de coussure en trois présents, c'est là, c'est rat. La moyenne est de 232. Comme frappeur gaucher, la moyenne de Rings, 349 cette saison. C'est bas, vous avez vu. Une et une. Oh, <rire> c'est un lancé finalement qui se retrouver hors cible à la toute dernière seconde. Deux balles, une prise. Fausse balle, à l'arrière. Deux balles, deux prises. Le moi, à Toronto, c'est maintenant 3-1 pour Seattle en cinquième. Et à Boston, Oakland a marqué quatre points en troisième. Les Red Sox sont venus avec six. Alors, c'est 6 à 4. Il y a eu un circuit d'Ape Singman contre 19e pour Oakland. Deux balles de prise. Lopez et Ashby sont entendus. Le lancer, la balle est rapide du côté gauche. À la poursuite, c'est Cruz. Oh, en sautant du gant, 4 de la balle. Ça va une partie par-dessus. 
Bon joueur défense. Il me semblait que Ossé Cruz a mal jugé la balle parce qu'il ne savait pas vraiment. Regardez-le aller. Tout à coup, il va saisir la balle en sautant et la balle semblait être derrière lui un peu. Il a mal jugé la trajectoire de la balle, mais la balle a été frappée avec beaucoup de force par Wayne. Mans, là, qui mérite pour faire moyen de faire contact avec le chemin sur les sentiers. 11 coups sûrs. Aussi, la balle est frappée, mais ce ne sera pas pour cette fois. C'est demandé par Reynolds. Le joueur d'arrêt-court et le vent. Il a fallu lui jouer un tour. Deux frères. C'est autour de Dawson. Dawson a réussi un circuit en première, son 14e de la saison. Et avec deux après personne devant lui. Le deuxième moitié de la huitième manche. Pas assez rapide, qui quitte le coin extérieur. Prise. 1 en 2, moyenne 275. Il fait atteint par un lancer de Nepper en troisième. L'élan. Il est encore loin et c'est aucune balle de prise. Il y a maintenant 37 ans. Hein? Pas de balle. C'est Il est né au Mexique à Tecama Chalco. Ah bon? <rire> je ne sais pas où je suis cassé, ça me fait difficile à prononcer quand même. Tecama Chalco. Oui, oui. Il fait 6 pieds et au moins 225 livres. Regardez le tour de taille. Ah, 250. Oui. Bon, il est payé à la ligne. Dans le guide de presse. Ouais. <rire> Sa première communion, ça. Il a lancé pause balle, encore une fois au grillage arrière. Dawson Brooks. Elle devrait bien avoir l'occasion de venir frapper. Ça fait des jours qu'on peut se offrir la chance d'être 4 en 4. C'est un thème, il faudra une longue course. C'était bien jugé par Pass, finalement, qui est là à temps. Quand c'est la balle, il complète le troisième retrait en huitième. Pour les échos, il n'y a pas eu de point d'écouture. Personne n'a été laissé sur les sentiers. Huit manches de jouer. Et c'est Montréal qui mène 2 à 1 dans ce match. Mais la Belgique vous parlez en direct du stade du Parc Olympique. Ce reportage est autorisé en vertu des droits de télévision accordés par le club de baseball Montréal Limité uniquement pour le plaisir des téléspectateurs et toute publication, reproduction, autre utilisation des images, description et compte rendu de ce match est interdite sans le consentement explicite du club de baseball Montréal Limité. Dernière chance des Astros, en neuvièmement chez environ Walling, Davis et Bass, il y a des changements en défense alors qu'on a envoyé là au premier coussin et que Al Newman joue au deuxième but maintenant. Qu'est-ce qui se passe avec Galaraga? Il y a sûrement quelque chose de, de normal avec lui. Newman, que voilà. C'est Galaraga, c'est un des bons joueurs de premier but de la Ligue. Vraiment, le jeu, le, le jeu de Warlick euh, en huitième manche a volé le match, a gardé la balle frappée avec un excellent coureur au deuxième. Il plonge, il va se relever à genoux, il lance au premier coussin et Walker a été incapable de bouger depuis le deuxième but. C'est ça qui a... Euh, qui a coûté le point vraiment au Astros de Houston. De toute façon, après le match, on aura le choix du joueur du match fait par Claude Raymond et le joueur la bas du match reçoit un appareil photo Nikon. Walling est le premier frappeur. Elle amorce le match avec une moyenne légèrement supérieure à 300. Le lancer est hors cible. Martin Kuda dans les granets, on se rend compte qu'il n'y a pas grand monde qui a quitté le stade. <rire> Avec un score de 2 à 1, c'est pas étonnant. Deuxième balle ici. Yomun qui est prêt. Le lancer. Prise de décision. Des maps de mieux. 2 deux et 1. Il 
un peu plus de temps à Yeoman dans ce chaque lancé. Ça va chez les spectateurs, c'est une deuxième prise. Deux et deux. Et pour un lanceur qui n'a pas une très longue expérience dans les majeurs, ici c'est une balle. Alors que son équipe mène pas un, et qu'on se retrouve avec trois balles de prise, il donc un peu plus de pression sur les épaules. Euh, où est-ce qu'on y pense vraiment? Ben, je ne pense pas qu'il y ait une à ça à l'heure actuelle. Là, Webster ne devrait pas avoir de problème. Voilà, je capte la balle. Enfin. Bon, la pression sur les épaules, je les... concentre trop pour prendre ça. Oui, c'est ça. La, la pression sur les épaules, c'est quand ça va mal, quand tout le monde se met à dire, ben là, il y a de la pression sur les épaules. Mais lorsqu'il lance avec tellement d'aisance comme il l'a fait là, il n'y a pas de pression du tout. Glenn Davis, 0 à 2 ce soir, il a fait le but sur balle en quatrième. Et tout de suite, Yeomans est prêt, le lancer assez rapide à l'intérieur. Le cercle d'attente de Kevin Bass. La dernière moitié de la neuvième manche. Yeomans a effectué un tir, c'est une bague du centre, le dernier lancé, n'a pas aimé la façon qu'il euh, qu avait la balle dans ses mains. Alors, immédiatement, il a changé de balle. Ça, c'est un bon signe encore. Attention dans la foule. Mais là, faut, mais là, il faut surveiller pour pas que l'officiel lui remette la même balle. Ça arrive souvent que l'officiel va remettre la même balle tout de suite. Et il y a des fois, on a une balle dans les mains et on ne se sent pas confortable avec cette balle-là. On est mieux de ne pas la lancer. Vous voyez, Yeomans examine la balle. Là. On est mieux de ne pas la lancer quand elle n'est pas confortable. Encore une fois, c'est avec... Euh une rapide, c'est tapé très très haut. Web sur la tente. C'était un bon contact à au moins 380 pieds du marbre. Et c'est le deuxième retrait. Personne sur les sentiers. À un fait de la victoire. Et le frappeur qui s'amène, Kevin Bass. Et lui ce soir n'a pas de coussure en trois présences. Et Bass, c'est peut-être le plus redoutable des frappeurs des Astros. Lui et Warding sont vraiment les deux meilleurs. Davis lui euh, vient d'être tiré de cette manière avec 19 circuits, mais... Bass a commencé... Il est dangereux, tout d'abord, parce que ses qualités de frappeur en vitesse, il est aussi bon de la gauche que de la droite. Il a commencé le match avec 310, il a 306 en trois mains. Il peut frapper la longue balle. Il a 13 circuits, ça c'est vraiment le plus Il est rapide et la défensive, elle avance change du profondément, alors... Euh... Espérons qu'il n'a pas l'idée de déposer un amorti sur prise. Et c'est 0 et 1. Non, c'est là, ça, ça va à l'arrière. Aucune balle de prise. À un retrait de la victoire pour Yeomans et les Expo. Il en fait pour profiter de défaillance des Mets. Et non, c'est pas. Il est deux. Voilà, c'est un autre balle cassante et Yeomans a été incapable de la maîtriser, alors il change de balle immédiatement. Avec une balle, deux prises, de lancer et haut. Alors c'est deux parties. Alors sa glissante ne fonctionne plus du tout, là. Il y avait des bons lancers rapides à la hauteur des genoux. Il va y aller avec la rapide. Il en reste euh, encore. Avec 2 et 2, le lancer. Non. On se complète. Il est allé avec la balle cassante. Oui. La rapide, c'est en ligne. Le bâton a été brisé. Basse va changer. Oh oui, l'endroit où ce lancer a été effectué, c'était à l'intérieur, peut-être un 6 pouces, un pied à l'intérieur du map. Bass s'était lancé, a tiré la balle, alors il n'utilisera plus jamais ce bâton. Kevin Bass qui revient en avec un compte complet, maintenant trois balles. Avec un compte complet, on va deux prises et aux écrouses au cercle d'attente.
Et on pourra poursuivre dans un moment. Bass a vraiment pris tout le temps qui euh, pouvait. Yeoman, son lancé, balle. Bûcher balle avec deux retraits. Bass s'en va au premier. Il est rapide, il euh, faut le mentionner. Il permet à Cruz de venir frapper. Cruz du volée à 22 tentatives. Le lancé, c'était en bas de la zone des prises. Euh, Bessler a tenté de voler la prise à l'officiel, mais il n'est pas tombé dans le panneau. Qu'est-ce que Bernard peut suggérer, tu penses? Bien, on va suggérer, j'ai l'impression, d'utiliser la balle rapide de Yeoman, parce que sa balle du centre ne fonctionne plus. C'est son meilleur lancé. Cruz est dangereux. Peut-être qu'on va suggérer qu'on garde la balle au point extérieur ou peut-être pas trop se préoccuper du coureur au premier coussin parce que Yomens a tendance à se préoccuper du coureur au premier. Alors, euh, le frappeur, c'est le joueur le plus important à l'heure actuelle. Le lancé, prise, décision. Cruz est 0 en 3 ce soir. Et pour un moment, on avait l'impression que Yomens avait passe à sa merci. Mais non, il s'en est tiré avec un but sur balle à l'extérieur. Une et une. Donc, il y a hâte que ça finisse. Oui, il n'a pas, pas tout à fait détendu. Non. Ça va être euh, le troisième retrait sur son crétise. Le coureur est parti. La balle est frappée. Ça va chez les spectateurs. C'est une deuxième prise. Et Bass retournera au premier coussin. On reconnaît beaucoup de stratégie de la, à la Buck Rogers, à Al Lanier. Lui aussi prend beaucoup de chance. Euh, il aime euh, faire courir ses joueurs. Il aime le cours et frappe, le vol de but. Une balle de prise. Le lancé. Prise de décision. C'est le troisième retrait de cette neuvième manche. Et en neuvième. Les Astros n'ont pas de points, il n'y a pas eu de coup sur aucune erreur et un coureur le dit sur les sentiers, le match est terminé. Une superbe performance, si l'égalisme Yomens avec ce retrait, ça marque personnel qui est de 11 retraits sur trois prises dans le même match. Et un jour il va battre cette, cette marque-là facilement parce que s'il continue à lancer des prises comme il l'a fait ce soir, il... c'est pas fini de voir Yomens accumuler des retraits sur des prises et souvent des 10 retraits et plus. C'est une superbe performance que l'on vient de, de voir, à laquelle on vient d'assister. Il n'y a pas eu un total énorme de coups sûrs dans le match, mais en défensive, en défense, il y a eu des jeux remarquables. Je pense à un de Warlock. Et ce qu'on verra, c'est le dernier lancé, le lancé qui met fin au match. Regardez la cible de Fitzgerald au coin extérieur. Le lancé effleur le coin extérieur, peut-être à l'extérieur un peu. C'est Fitzgerald qui a voyé la prise et il cruise à pas ses yeux. Et voilà comment Yomus a réagi en voyant de mieux prendre la décision. Ah non, <rire> c'est fini déjà. <rire> Est-ce qu'il serait déjà blasé à son âge Non, 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 non c'est sa personnalité. Il est de, ouais. ce, ce genre de joueur qui ne laisse pas paraître d'ailleurs, euh, que ce soit sur le terrain ou ailleurs, c'est pas un joueur qui, qui fait beaucoup de bruit. Alors nous voilà de nouveau dans notre coin, au stade, alors qu'on peut... Euh, réjouir de cette victoire des Expos et euh, Claude qui a eu le temps de surveiller tous les détails de la rencontre. Pour nous en parler plus longtemps, j'aimerais connaître d'abord son choix de, du, de la, du joueur du match. Eh bien, je pense que c'est pas mal facile de choisir le joueur du match parce qu'on voit lancer un gars comme euh, Floyd Yeoman. Euh, il était en possession de tous ses moyens. Il n'a accordé que deux coups sûrs et les deux coups sûrs n'ont pas été cognés solidement. Et lorsqu'on voit Yeoman avec neuf victoires maintenant, on se demande si... Euh, s'il avait commencé la saison avec un peu plus de force, il serait pas au match des étoiles lui aussi. Mais euh, tout de même, il fait très, très bien. Et ça enlève beaucoup euh, un gros fardeau sur les épaules de, de Buck Rogers et Larry Bernard. Et le joueur là-bas du match reçoit un appareil photo Nikon. Maintenant, des considérations d'ensemble sur ce qu'a été la rencontre. Je parlais d'un jeu en défense. Je ne l'ai pas oublié celui-là parce que c'était super celui de... De Warwick. Au premier coussin également, il y a eu du beau travail de Galaraga. Galaraga a fait du beau travail. Malheureusement, il n'a pas terminé le match. Je ne sais pas s'il y a eu des étourdissements, parce qu'on sait qu'il a été frappé à la tête dimanche à Atlanta. Mais il a très bien joué. Mais lorsqu'on voit Warlick jouer, lorsqu'on voit Warling jouer au troisième but, on a vu tantôt, il a essayé de capter une balle de la main nue, une balle frappée par Yubi Brooks. La balle lui a échappé. Warlick, c'est rare que ces balles-là lui échappent. Le jeu qu'il a fait, Contre Louis Meadows, c'était un jeu spectaculaire. Il a empêché Walker, qui est rapide, de marquer du deuxième. Même, il l'a gardé au deuxième but. 
Et Yayou B. Brooks a eu euh, une bonne soirée avec les coups sûrs. Oui. Et puis, euh, c'est simple. Dans l'ensemble, c'était un très, très bon match. Ça a été un match fort divertissant. Et, et ce qui n'est pas nécessairement courant dans le monde du baseball majeur, c'est un match qui s'est déroulé à assez d'évalure. Euh, des matchs qui dépassent trois heures maintenant sont choses courantes. Celui-là, ça se joue plus rapidement. Oui, je me demande si Houston avait hâte de prendre l'avion et retourner à Houston <rire> parce qu'ils étaient à New York, le Montréal. Mais il, je sais que demain, ils jouent à, à Houston. Alors, euh, mais quand un lanceur lance des prises, on frappe la première balle. On a toujours hâte. Surtout un lanceur de balle rapide comme Newman, on tente de frapper la balle le plus solidement possible. Maintenant, brièvement, peut-être en 30 secondes, c'est fini avec Houston, qui est un adversaire coriace, ceux qui s'en viennent. Mais les Reds viennent tout juste de, de battre les, les Mets de New York trois fois. Alors, ils seront sûrement gonflés à bloc, euh, mais il faudra les surveiller parce qu'ils ont des gars qui sont capables de frapper la balle. Les lanceurs laissent peut-être à désirer cette année. Et malgré tout, c'est une, une équipe qui est imprévisible. Je connais de très, de très haut moment et un peu plus bas. Exactement. Merci Claude Raymond, on se retrouve très bientôt. Eh bien, je vous rappelle encore une fois que le joueur, la batte du match est Floyd de Yeomans et que notre prochain reportage, ce sont les Reds de Cincinnati et les Expos de Montréal qui seront face. Le match à la télévision, donc le 12 juillet, le samedi 12 juillet à 19h30, heure avancée de l'Est, en direct du stade du Parc Olympique. Au nom de Claude Raymond. Serge Arsenault et Cyril Lebrun qui vous rappellent la marque finale du, du match de ce soir. Les Expos qui l'emportent 2 à 1. Bonne fin de soirée, mesdames, messieurs, en direct du stade du Parc Olympique à Montréal.